What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Let's Machine back here again for Rack Practical Machinist. Today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be going through some of the threads we found on the Practical Machinist forum that we found interesting. Let's get into it. All right guys, so as we mentioned in our last video, the topics for this discussion we're gonna have today come from the Practical Machinist forum. As I've said before, I won't take too long on it, Make sure you go check out the Practical Machinist form if you haven't thus far. Um, incredible resource, I spend a lot of time on there in my free time because you know, if you're not learning something, at least you're gonna get to see some interesting perspectives on things. And you know guys, at the end of the day, if you've only worked at a couple shops, it's a great way to find out how different people do things. Um, it's a great way to get some different opinions that you may not be exposed to otherwise, so I highly recommend it. So the first one we found on there was interesting. Um, I really wanted to comment on this because I was surprised that this was a little bit of a debate and not just a very one side. I mean, the majority of the opinions on this were kind of towards what I was thinking, but there was at least a contingent of dissenters involved in this and I found that fascinating. But the question was, quite bluntly, and we'll link to it here, what level of violence is acceptable in a shop, real or implied? Again, what level of violence is acceptable in a shop, real, real or implied? Um, this is an interesting question because I didn't realize this would be a question. Um, to go over what other people said there, I feel like there was a bit of a generational gap. Um, you know, there was some discussion of, well, is it real violence? Is someone going and physically hurting somebody? Is it a fist fight? Um, or is it implied? Are you sending out a goon that works for you to go intimidate uh, you know, people that owe you money? Or do you have a guy who's constantly harassing another guy on the floor? Well, what does violence mean? And I mean, the response is, wait, I'm trying not to just jump right into my own opinion on this. But the response has ranged from what I imagine to be some of the older guys saying, well, you know, back in the day at certain shops, you just had to fist fight to get it out. And you know, yeah, there was a bit of hazing, but it was no big deal. Um, two, what my opinion is, guys, there is never, ever, ever any level of violence or harassment that is acceptable in a workplace, whether that is a shop or a grocery store or a bar. It's not acceptable. And there's no level that is going to be acceptable in my shop, real or implied. Um, I know, especially in a trade that is predominantly men, um, it's great we're getting some women in the trade and stuff, and I know some of you guys are great, but there can be a very testosterone-fueled environment in manufacturing. Um, historically, it definitely was so. It's changing a bit. And with testosterone comes hot heads, short tempers, big egos. Um, I've definitely heard stories of back in the day, you know, guys stealing tool from another guy's toolbox, so he walked up and decked him in the face. That does not fly today. Guys, it shouldn't have flown then. Um, basically, from a straight technical standpoint, if we're gonna go really high level on this, liability for the shop owner or for the organization, if there is an injury on the floor and the person running the shop or the supervisor does not take steps to mitigate and stop it, they are liable. And if that is you, you are liable. You can get sued, you can be criminally charged, your company will get dragged through the mud, there is zero level of violence that is acceptable in the eyes of the law, and there isn't any level that is acceptable, you know, from a civil suit standpoint. They're not gonna say, oh, well, he was only punched in the face twice, but it was probably defense. This guy was bugging him, so it's acceptable. It doesn't fly that way. The other big thing, guys, is from a management standpoint, you should never have a situation that gets there. So first of all, either you as your shop owner First of all, you should not be instigating violence ever. Um, I think I said in my last video, or at least maybe one before that, that I don't even believe in yelling in my shop. I certainly don't believe in harassment. I certainly don't believe in um, you know, personal attacks on somebody. There are ways to vent frustrations constructively. There's ways just to have a conversation sometimes to get something off your chest without being harassing, without being demeaning, without being a bully. And if you as a shop owner are allowing this stuff to happen in your shop, that is on you. Um, you know, this is your shop. You hired these people, you sign their paychecks. They're here because you allow them to be. 
and you want them to be. But from a standpoint of if someone is being a disruption and they're still in your shop, yeah, that's you allowing that behavior to continue. Uh, turning a blind eye on a situation where you know one of your staff is bullying another staff and you know making their life really difficult, and then eventually that person snaps, that person doesn't get a pass for snapping. It's on you that they snapped because you didn't deal with the scenario when it started. And you know what, if you're liable for that, in that scenario, guys, you probably deserve it. Um, there's no, I saw some guys on there who commented, you know, some guys just need to be taught a lesson, you know. There's a lot of men that, you know, don't listen when you talk to them. And you know what, that may be true. The deal is, that's not your issue to deal with. Get rid of them, fire them, lay them off. Don't make someone else's violent problems or harassment problems your problems. Scream for it properly, deal with it as soon as you hear about it. You know, don't just fire people if someone's, the one thing I saw on there was, I believe probably an older gentleman just based on the way he phrased this was, back in the day, what did he say here? Back in the day, uh, you know, you could do whatever and you might get fired, but today you even hurt someone's feelings, you get fired. That is a completely, completely wrong way to look at this, guys. In a trade where you are dealing with high tolerance things, you're dealing with people, you know, you have to be a professional. You have to be a professional. And being a harasser, you know, taking things out on other people physically is never acceptable. So most people there in this thread agreed with me, but I just really wanted to comment on this one to drive it home, guys. There is zero level of violence that is acceptable in a shop. And if you disagree with me, I feel like you really need to take a look at what things you find important because you're not gonna be in the trade long. It's, it's just not acceptable. Okay guys, so really keep that in mind and go read that thread because it was enlightening. It, it was interesting. The next conversation, which we'll link up here that I found very, very interesting and a little more heartfelt than the one about how much violence you can have in your shop was when do you know it is time to leave? Um, guys, you know, at the end of the day, not all jobs are for life. I think we all know this. Um, very rarely do you learn a lot in your career if you just stay at one spot, unless you're very lucky and you're surrounded by very, very good people at that shop. Sometimes you need to leave. Um, people there had some very, very good insights on this in the thread, so make sure you go read it. Um, I found it very, very helpful. And the general consensus was pretty much the same, but I did find it nice to see that guys kind of all had the same take on it. And at the end of the day, guys, there are a lot of reasons why you may want to leave a shop. Some of these guys outlined them in there, like maybe the shop is moving. You know, sometimes shops have to move or they relocate and you don't want to relocate. Maybe you have, uh, you know, family here and you don't want to leave. That's a completely okay reason to leave. Um, maybe that you do want to relocate. Maybe you have a spouse or family who is moving and you want to move with them. Again, guys, completely fine reason to want to relocate. Maybe, you know, your pay just isn't where it needs to be. Maybe you're feeling mistreated. There's a lot of reasons that are valid for why you may want to leave a shop. But at the end of the day, guys, the question was, when do you know when it's time to leave, not what are your reasons to leave? To touch on the reasons regarding that, guys, you don't need a reason to leave a shop. You can love working somewhere, you can love everybody there, and you just feel it's time to go, that is a perfectly fine reason. Um, it's the same thing you know with ending a relationship. If you just feel like that is time to happen, you don't need to explain it. Um, you know, you don't owe your employer an explanation why you're leaving. It's nice to give them one, but sometimes that reason is just, I want to move on, and that's fine. But to answer the question of when is it time to move on, how do you know when it is time to move on, the general consensus is one that I agreed with, and that is, it really comes down to you just know. Um, I think we've all been in a scenario where you've had a bad week at work and you consider quitting or you know you get in a debate with somebody on the floor about how something should be done. You know the shop decides to go in the other direction of your idea and oh I'm not appreciated here I'm gonna quit today and then we get over it. You know there's bad periods in every employment no matter where you are even at the bad shop, best shops guys there's times where it's gonna get stressful and things are gonna not go your way. Um, you're gonna break parts you're gonna think maybe you should leave the trade because Oh, you know, I'm just not good at this. It happens to everybody. But at the end of the day, you will know when it's time to leave your shop, and hopefully not the trade, but you know, you'll know when it's time to leave deep down because it's just not fulfilling. The money is not worth it. Um, you're not feeling valued. You'll just feel completely resigned and ready to go. Sometimes that's a good feeling and it feels like you are ready to go on and take on the world. Other times that's a bad feeling and you feel, you know, 
I just need to go somewhere to try to start again because this is just not working for me. And the only advice I would give on this, guys, is never, never, never rush into a situation and quit in anger. Let's say a scenario happens at your shop and it really kind of crystallizes that idea in your head that, you know what, I need to move on. That's fine. The advice I would give you is before, this isn't about giving your two weeks. This is about you making that decision to give your two weeks. I would give that decision two weeks. Sit on it. Make sure it's something that's not passing. You know, don't make sure you're not putting some other scenarios that are going on in your life onto your job. You know, maybe you're having some issues personally, maybe you're dealing with some money issues. We all have them, guys. Make sure that your issues that are bugging you while you're at work actually have to do with your work. Because otherwise you're gonna go to a new shop and the same issues are gonna be there. You know, maybe you you're not feeling respected at your shop, so you wanna go somewhere where you're appreciated. Guys, maybe you're feeling disrespected because you have other things going on in your life. You know, it's, it sounds kind of woo woo and out there, but make sure the issues you're having with your job are with your job before you throw your job out. Because I know right now is a really good time, it seems, to go and switch shops and get a new job. It's not always that way. And you don't know when that moment's gonna come where all of a sudden it gets difficult again. I mean, look at a time like 2008 that put tons of people out of work. Um, had you decided that, you know, you just don't like where you're at and you're gonna go switch, and then that happened right when you're trying to do it, you'd be, in you'd be in a problem. And at the end of the day, you may have just been trying to save your ego to switch jobs. So at the end of the day, it wasn't worth it at all. Um, the other thing is guys, so once you've kind of made sure that this is something you want to do, just some general advice on quitting. Most places you owe your employer two weeks, sometimes you don't. It really depends on where you are in your area. My personal opinion is that unless you're in a scenario where you are in a situation that is unsafe, either because you're being told to do unsafe work or the work environment is unsafe, you know, relating to the last conversation, threats of physical violence, um, harassment, you know, things that are very, very pressing and urgent. As long as it's nothing like that, I would always recommend trying to give, you know, a minimum two weeks, but beyond that, one week for every year you've worked there. So if you've been there five years, it's nice to give your employer five weeks. Um, not always possible. You know, I am speaking of this from an employer perspective. I've definitely had scenarios where I've had to walk out of a job. I've had scenarios where I've given six months notice that, you know what, I'm gonna go, I'm leaving, um, let's train someone up. The situation is always different, but I would always recommend trying to give, as long as you wanna keep that relationship, you know, to kind of go on to the next point, you don't wanna burn a bridge. That's what this really relates to because you know it's always nice to have references. You never know uh, in the future what's gonna happen. I've had guys leave here and come back a few years later and leave again and there's still no bad blood there. It was a good place for you to work. You need to make some changes, that's fine. Oh, it's good to have you back. Um, you never know who's gonna to go to another role where you know that guy that you quit on, your old supervisor, maybe he's gonna go into purchasing at a company that you wanna get work from. It happens a lot, guys. Don't burn your bridges. If you're gonna burn the bridge, make sure it's worth burning. Like I said, if it's violence or harassment, in that case, you know, walk out, don't come back, tell them to mail you your last paycheck and that's fine. But always try to make sure you're preserving the relationship even if it's not a direct working relationship anymore. Um, you don't owe anybody in this world anything, but I do believe in trying to be a good person and I think that's the best way to go about it. I'd like to hear some of your stories below, guys, on reasons you have quit jobs and ways you have quit jobs or ways you have seen quit jobs, because these stories are always both insightful and funny. You know, did a guy throw his toolbox in the back of his Nissan Sentra and drive off? Or just tell me your stories about this below, guys, because I know we all have them, okay? Thank you very much for watching, guys. As always, make sure you like and subscribe below if you want to see more videos. You take care.